Welcome back to The Good Mood with The Good Dude, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how I sculpted the Corona Man. I've included plenty of timestamps in the description box below, so if you want to skip the bullshit and get to a good bit, feel free to click those. Back in April, an Instagram personality slash account that I follow, Lady Kane, started a hobby slash painting competition with a bunch of sub competitions along the way using the hashtag a tale of champions. So the first sub challenge was to kit bash a champion. The second sub challenge was to paint some companions for that champion. The third challenge was to build a villain and that is today's challenge. And then the last challenge was to bring it all together in a diorama, which will be in future video. Although I didn't officially participate in this competition, it's actually over now, I really liked the vignettes that Lady Kane had provided and I had a vision for, I had a vision for a diorama that I wanted to do with my champions and my companions and my villain. And so today we are building the villain for my hashtag a tale of champions build. I started by sketching out the form of Corona Man to use as a guide when building the wire armature. This is important because I'd already sculpted the bat soup noodles and I wanted the scale of the two components to match. I then bent lengths of wire to fit the sketch I just finished. Since I had used two separate pieces of wire, I wanted to reinforce their connection with some smaller gauge jewellery wire, which I twisted around their connection points. To bulk up the armature, I used aluminium foil, known as aluminum foil in North America, by squeezing it into a ball around the wire center. I also wound some jewelry wire around the existing wire limbs. The idea here is that this breaks up the smooth surface of the wire and creates a more variegated surface for the putty to adhere to when I add it later. I also wrapped some wire around the foil to stop it from moving. I really should have used masking tape for this, but I didn't have any masking tape handy and wire was on the table next to me. Next I mixed up some green stuff and milliput. The idea is that I was going to apply this to the metal skeleton because it's far more adhesive than the polymer clay I was going to use. This would ensure that the polymer clay would stick to the wire and foil because it would stick to the putty and the putty would stick to the frame. The polymer clay I used was a cheap, no-name product from a chain of craft stores in Australia. I don't know enough about polymer clay as of yet to make a judgement about the quality of the product compared to brands like Fimo or Sculpey, but it did the job I wanted to do in this build. After kneading the polymer clay, I rolled it out into a sheet and wrapped it over the putty. To be honest, there was a big section that I had left puttyless because I was running low on supplies and the polymer clay didn't seem to have much difficulty adhering to these sections of the foil, so I probably didn't need to use the putty as I had. Next, I cut up some sections of wire to make the armature for the nodules of the coronavirus, or the spike proteins, and I stuck those pins into the clay and putty layer. I then realised this was a terrible idea because I'd be holding an object with a bunch of metal spikes all over it, so I removed all the pins and resolved to add these later in the build. And here he is with his body made, wobbling around having a dance, he's looking pretty happy. Bulking up the limb armature followed the same procedure as before, applying a mix of green stuff and mealy putt to the wire, followed by the polymer clay. I then came back with more polymer clay to bulk out the main forms of Corona Man's musculature. With Corona Man's main form complete, I baked the armature to cure the polymer clay. Once the armature had cured, I used a low grit sandpaper to correct aspects of the sculpt that I didn't like, removing layers of cured polymer clay. I did this outside so I wouldn't create a mess. This footage taken inside is only demonstrative of the sanding process in case you need an illustration. I used Ava's epoxy sculpt to refine Corona Man's shape. This was the first time I'd used Ava's epoxy sculpt and I gotta say, it's absolutely fantastic. 
If you haven't used it, do yourself a favor, find some, you really need to try it. The main aspects of the sculpt I had to correct were the symmetry of Corona Man's virus body and to build up his muscles. I spent a lot of time looking at pictures of bodybuilders' limbs to try and make Corona Man's limbs look somewhat realistic. With the body and the limbs mostly sculpted, it was time to add the protein spikes. I drilled holes all over Corona Man's body and used the same pins I had made earlier, inserting these into the holes. To fix them in place, I used some super glue and a blob of epoxy sculpt. Now, if I'd had some super glue accelerant on hand, I probably would not have needed to use the epoxy sculpt blob, but I didn't have any, so I may do. I created the shape of the spike proteins using epoxy sculpt, coming back with more epoxy sculpt once the first layer had cured. With most of the details of the body done, it was time to move on to the hands and feet. To attach the figure to his 100mm base, I cut the polymer clay and putty off the bottom of his legs. I drilled a hole beneath his right foot, which is the foot that is already sculpted in the shot, and threaded the original wire frame through the hole and glued it to the underside of the base. I sculpted his right foot off camera and was really happy with the result, but I screwed up my first attempt at the left foot and I'm still not entirely satisfied with the final result. I should have taken more time to ensure that the angles of the foot and its proportions looked right. To correct for my mistake, I cut off the toes I'd already sculpted and sanded back some of the rest of the foot. I'm using a mixture of green stuff and epoxy sculpt to make the toes here. I like this mixture for this purpose because the bubblegum consistency of green stuff makes it well suited for making blobby shapes like those of toes. To make the shape of the toenails, I just used this spoon metal tool to make flat depressions in Corona Man's toes. The key to sculpting with epoxy putty is to use multiple layers, so I came back with epoxy sculpt to refine the form of the feet. You'll notice that the material is very shiny. That's because I'm using Sculptor's Vaseline from Green Stuff World to lubricate my instruments. Another popular sculpting lubricant is Nivea Hand Cream and I would probably recommend that, as you don't need to put the same effort into removing it from the miniature at the end of the job and before painting the mini. Sculptor's Vaseline must be cleaned off in the same way that releasing agent must be removed from a resin miniature before painting. But I bought this Sculptor's Vaseline, so I'm going to use it. To make the hands, I started by making a wire armature. I bent and twisted two lengths of wire into two rough palm shapes, being careful to ensure that they had matching proportions. I then used much narrower jewelry wire to make a metal skeleton for the digits. This is what the finished wireframe looks like for one hand. Again, I'm using the same process as before, starting with green stuff to create the basic form of the hand. Then I'll refine the shape with layers of epoxy sculpt. In Corona Man's right hand, he's holding a bowl of bat noodle soup that I'd already sculpted, but in his left hand, he's holding a boarding pass. To make the boarding pass, I mixed up a ball of green stuff and formed it into a worm, which I rolled out into a rectangle shape. I tried to square off the sides of the rectangle to make it look more like a ticket and less like a blob of putty. Now the reason I've put it on baking paper is so that I can just bend the baking paper and the putty will bend along with it. And this will help create the shape of a ticket that is sagging with the force of gravity. Once the putty has cured, it will easily come off the baking paper and I can sharpen up the edges and remove excess putty with a knife. I realize that there's a big shot of yellow putty that hasn't mixed, it's gone a little bit bad in the package, but I'm not really that bothered. This is a display piece and no one's really going to be touching the boarding pass, so it's not going to make that much of a difference once the figure is painted, even if it looks ugly and amateurish right now.
I then glued the finished ticket onto Corona Man's left hand and finished touching up the form around the boarding pass. To create the blobs on Corona Man's surface, I mixed up some more epoxy sculpt and rolled it into little balls, which I super glued in triplets onto the surface of Corona Man's body. The placement of these isn't as scientifically accurate as it could be, but it looks good enough. I wanted to do something to fill the seam lines between different sculpting materials and layers on Corona Man's body, so I tried a couple of different things. First, I tried Milliput. Uh, that had been heavily diluted with water. And next I tried Vallejo's plastic putty. And while I'm sure both would have gotten good results if I'd taken my time, I was impatient and wanted some quick results. I decided that I liked the texture I could make with Milliput, and I mixed Milliput vigorously with water to create bubbles. I mixed a bunch of this and applied it liberally to Corona Man's body. The bubbles that that mixture creates leaves a nice organic surface that I think will take washes well when it comes time to paint. Before priming Corona Man, I had to wash off all the sculptor's Vaseline. I just used soapy water and paper towels for this task. Next, I added some texture paint to Corona Man's base. I used Vallejo light brown mud, Vallejo dark brown mud, which is a little thicker and has some fibers to simulate organic material in soil, and some agrellon earth from Citadel. Ideally, you would use a dedicated tool for this job, like a trowel, but I'm just using this old cheap brush, which works well enough. Finally, I added some model stones, mostly made from cork, to add some further variation to the texture of the base. Once this was done, I took Corona Man outside and gave him a zenithal prime. And this is how he looks. This is the finished product. Well, finished for now. He still needs to be painted, but that's gonna be for another video. There are still some areas where the seam lines between layers of putty are visible, and he's definitely not a perfect sculpt, but I'm really happy with the way he turned out. And that's the finished product. So in a future video, I'll come back and paint Corona Man when I've worked out my filming painting situation a little bit better. And I was originally gonna say some things at the end here about what I've learned and what I would do differently next time. Things like, I wanna do a whole sculpture out of polymer clay rather than going from polymer clay to epoxy putty, which I did for reasons. Um, but instead of going to that sort of stuff, I'm just gonna end the video here. This is the good mood, I'm the good dude, and I'll see you in the future.